Did you see this? Yes, I did. I think it's about time. I just don't get it. Why do we need a special gender-neutral bathroom? I just think it's one or the other. You're either born a man or a woman. Most people are identified at birth by their biological sex as male or female. Gender, however, is much more complex, and many people don't fit into the narrow categories of male or female, and some people's gender doesn't match their biological sex at birth. It's what I've always known. You're either a boy or a girl. I'm all for diversity at work, and I guess the spectrum makes sense, but do we really need special bathrooms? A gender-neutral bathroom creates a safe space for those people who don't feel comfortable going to the bathroom they would typically expect to go to. One of the places where oppression happens is in bathrooms. For transgender and or gender non-conforming people, the use of public restrooms can come with emotional and physical harassment, deep discomfort, risk of arrest for being in the wrong bathroom, or even physical violence and death. Public bathrooms. They've been a problem for me since as far back as I can remember. First when I was just a little baby tomboy and then later as a masculine appearing predominantly estrogen based organism. <laughs> now today as a, as a trans person, public bathrooms and change rooms are where I am most likely to be questioned or harassed. I've often been verbally attacked behind their doors. I've been hauled out by security guards with my pants still halfway pulled up. I've been stared at, screamed at, whispered about, and one time I got smacked in the face by a little old lady's purse that from the looks of the shiner I took home that day, I am pretty certain contained at least $70 of rolled up small change and a large hard candy collection. <laughs> and I know what some of you are thinking, and you're mostly right. I can and do just use the men's room most of the time these days. But that doesn't solve my change room dilemmas, does it? And I shouldn't have to use the men's room because I'm not a man. I'm a trans person. And now we got these fear-mongering politicians that keep trying to pass these bathroom bills. Have you heard about these? They try to legislate to try and force people like myself to use the bathroom that they deem most appropriate according to the gender I was assigned at birth. And if, if these politicians ever get their way in Arizona or California or Florida or just last week in Houston, Texas or Ottawa, well then, using the men's room will not be a legal option for me either. For over a century, the debate regarding gendered bathrooms has existed. Within recent years, the debate has taken on a new focus. Those who depart from conventional sex and or gender body politics have challenged the idea of gendered bathrooms. Unfortunately, gendered bathrooms have created anxiety about gender variance which has been projected onto those who stray away from traditional gender binaries. Due to the anxieties brought on by gender variants, those who are transgender suffer from psychological distress, discrimination, physical abuse, and harassment. Is it down here? Yeah, this is the ladies. Okay, I think I'm... No, no, come on. I don't really have to go that bad. So. I do. All right. Dad, if you have to go in front of me, that's fine. Because I don't have to go. No, Ellie has to go. She doesn't, Dad. It's not a man. I don't know. Hey, Mom. What? what? Do you see the little person over there? Great. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a guy? She just called him down. Sure. Excuse me. Are you a man? This is the ladies' restroom. Yeah, we're aware of what it is. Thank okay, you. Thank Sir, you. We're good. Sir, can you hear me? Because this is the ladies' restroom, and clearly that is a man. This is my father, and he's a woman, and he has every right to be in this bathroom. Well, well, no, he does not. And you know what? I'm calling security because there are young women in here that you are traumatizing. Oh, really? You mean the little sneaking yeah. bitches over there? Whoa, they they look really traumatized. You don't, you don't talk to my children that way. Oh, and you don't even talk to my father like that. Yeah. In a survey conducted by the National Center for Transgender Equality, they found that in 2015, 
almost 60% of transgender Americans avoided using a public restroom. 32% limited the amount they ate and drank to avoid using the restroom. 24% had their presence questioned and or challenged. 12% were verbally harassed while accessing a restroom and 9% were denied restroom access. In the following, I will be discussing the history of gendered bathrooms and will explain how they are used to discipline gender. In the 1700s, Paris decided to create the first sex-segregated toilets. In the late 1800s, America decided to make it a requirement for men and women to use separate restrooms. In 1887, Massachusetts passed the first regulation which required men and women to use separate bathrooms in businesses. The law stated that wherever male and female persons are employed in the same factory or workshop, a significant number of separate and distinct water closets, earth closets, or privies shall be provided for the use of each sex and should be plainly designated. Afterwards, almost every state passed its own version of the law. According to Terry Cogan, a law professor at the University of Utah, these laws regarding public spaces were not created with physical differences between men and women in mind, but rather created due to the social anxieties about women's place in society. At the time, there was a reluctance to integrate women fully into public life. During that period, a woman's place was her home due to social norms. Policymakers at the time argued that women were weaker and were in need of protection from the harsh realities of the public sphere, hence the introduction of separate facilities. Some of these arguments, such as the idea that separate facilities protect women from harm, are still made today. It even turned up in a campaign ad when Gainesville, Florida was trying to pass one of these bills. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's break that bullshit down, because first, assaulting children is still illegal. <laughs> Secondly, someone abusing a non-discrimination ordinance to assault someone in a bathroom is almost unheard of. It's a borderline imaginary crime. When you pass these ordinances and these rules, particularly in the adult sector, um, it says any person, any man who feels like he's a transgender, he feels like he's a woman, can go in. They don't have to be dressed like a woman, they can be dressed like an ordinary man. And what this creates, Megan, is a great loophole for all the sexual predators and sex offenders. Heteronormativity is dependent on the separation of gender and sorting of bodies. Now, this is where the heterosexual matrix comes into play. Judith Butler, well known for queer theory, coined the term and defines it as a grid of cultural intelligibility through which bodies, genders, and desires are naturalized. Trans and gender non-conforming youth face additional challenges when accessing pools and, and gyms, but also universities, hospitals, libraries. Don't even get me started on how they treat us in airports. Spatial designs that are gender exclusionary, such as restrooms, help sustain the heterosexual matrix. By sustaining the heterosexual matrix, issues arise for those who don't conform to gender norms. I remember one of my first days at school, and I was in the girls' toilets, when two girls I knew came near me and said, look, there's a boy in here. I looked over my shoulder, but there was no one there. So I asked them where. I realized they meant me. I was really shocked, as I'd only ever really been around people who knew and understood me. I felt upset and alienated. Eventually, this misrecognition started happening in public bathrooms as well, with adults assuming my gender. Often I would get things like, why are you in here? Or wrong bathroom. 
This eventually led to me being hesitant and tentative about even going to the bathroom in public. Mostly, people didn't actually say anything at all. They just stared at me. This felt and feels worse. Gender exclusionary spatial designs lead to those who don't conform to be rendered invisible and subject to erasure. To find out more information on this issue, we decided to go around Arizona State University's downtown campus and ask some people their opinions and thoughts. Well, yeah, as long as, as either gender can go in as one person, that's fine. I wouldn't feel good being in with women and having them feel like I was uh, having any thoughts on them and using the bathroom. So I wouldn't be comfortable with them because right. I, I feel like I would be making women uncomfortable. There's several things. I agree. I agree. I feel that we should still have a separation of restrooms just because we have to be respectful of everyone and not everyone feels comfortable with, with the idea of having gender neutral. Uh, and just because you never know who's going to use them. Is it all adults? Is it children and adults? So as a parent, I don't feel comfortable sending my five-year-old when there's also adult males using them. If it's in a setting where you have all adults, you know, I would go ahead and do it. Um, but I would have the option. I would also have the option because we want for everyone to feel comfortable mm -hmm. using the restaurants. So you would say it's more of an age thing for you rather than gender? Mm -hmm. okay. The concept of gender that underlies the design of these facilities ignores people who do not fit in a binary gender scheme, particularly transgender and gender nonconforming people. Traditional beliefs about gender are being challenged now more than ever, and we must address the inadequacies of our built environment to meet the needs of all people regardless of gender. I think there's still a lot of biases and there's a lot of prejudices and stereotypes um, around that subject. And do I think why should we have, if at home we have one bathroom and men and women use it, I mean, we don't have a distinction between who uses it and why do we have it out in the public? So I would just have both, you know? Why not? <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. I hope we're making progress. I think everyone deserves love and kindness, and um, and there's a lot of deep stereotypes and opinions that will take time to overcome. But um, I certainly think that people deserve to be treated kindly. Mm -hmm. This scientific study demonstrates the severity and urgency of this issue. Among the transgender people who responded to Herman's study about restroom access, 54% reported adverse health effects from trying to avoid using public restrooms, such as dehydration, kidney infections, and urinary tract infections. 54% have had health problems due to lack of access to a restroom. Yeah, just holding it. It's not good for you. Could we also just make more single occupancy, all gender restrooms? That's helpful for me, parents, and anyone with disabilities. Let's make bathrooms accessible and safe for everyone. We have found three ways to provide gender neutral bathrooms without any major changes to facilities. One, if you already have single occupancy or family bathrooms, designate and label them all genders, gender neutral, or unisex. Two, if you have three or four multi-stalled bathrooms, turn one or two of them into all gender bathrooms. Three, be sure to have signs by your bathrooms and elsewhere that direct people to both the all gender bathrooms and the gender specific bathrooms.